Hello and welcome to the Meeting Gold Podcast. My name is Sammy Milley, your host, and today we're joined by Vinny, and uh, he owns a company called Build a Beard Co., which is really cool. That's We were talking a little bit earlier off camera, and um, not many people own a beard company, but I was going to say is if anybody would own a beard company, it'd be you because you got the, the trim beard. Appreciate right that. there. But uh, Vinny, why don't you introduce yourself? We've got three cameras set up here from now on, guys. But uh, yeah, Vinny, if you want to look at just the Sony right here, that'd be fantastic. Um, and just kind of introduce yourself. Give the viewers a little bit of a background of who you are. Sure. Nice to meet you. Hello. And thank you for having me on the podcast. Uh, my name is Vinny. I'm the founder of Maintained uh, Instagram Build a Beard Company, Build a Beard Co. Uh, we are the founders of the world's first community built e commerce brand. And uh, what I mean by that is our Instagram followers built every aspect of our brand by voting through each stage from our brand name to our first product design to the charity we support and all the way up to the products that we're, we're bringing out every single month. It, it really is incredible. Like if you break that down, kind of what you just said, you did not really make the final decision on anything. That's right. And you're the owner. Yeah. <clears throat> right. True. Is that, is that. You know what? A lot of people have a hard time relinquishing control. I don't know how you managed to build a whole brand without, you know, putting your two cents in. So give us a rundown of like, I would ask you where this idea came from, but I feel like that's too generic. I want to get more into the details of like what's going on now with this kind of business. So how did you kind of build the brand, build the following to vote on your, what, what your next steps are, what people want, that kind of thing. Because everybody starts somewhere. Everybody's got to start at five followers, right? So where did you kind of get that community from? Great question. I mean, it kind of happened by fluke in a funny way. Really, eh? It was a pandemic story. So, you know, I actually quit my full-time job. Um, I have an accounting background. I oh, used, okay. I used to, yep. professionally, I'm, I am an accountant. But I kind of left that corporate life, and I kind of wanted to explore entrepreneurship a little bit. So once I, I left my full-time job, I kind of had this rebellious phase where I'm like, you know what, when I worked the corporate life, I had to have a clean shaven face, the stereotypical man look where you're putting the shirt on, buttoning it up, and you have to be clean every yep, single yep. day and presentable. And I was like, you know what, now that I quit my job, I don't need to have that persona anymore. Let me try growing up my facial hair. And then number two, um, the pandemic, we're, we're in the middle of, you know, a global pandemic where you're not even allowed to see a barber and somebody like me, I'm East Indian, we grow a lot of facial hair, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so I wasn't really seeing anyone, we're in lockdown, I don't need to look good for anyone, so I just started growing up my beard. And um, I did play around with the beard look way before this started, but... Um, like your own, personal... Yeah, I, I did have a little bit of a beard, but it was nothing like that, gotcha. what it is today. And <clears throat> the pandemic was the beginning of me growing a beard. And I had some like beard oil that I just didn't even look into. I just bought it off the shelf. I didn't know what it was, what's in it, because my beard wasn't even that serious at right. that time. But now I'm growing facial hair and I'm like, OK, I'm running out of beard oil. I'm not seeing a barber. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to buy beard products now, I really need to know what I'm putting in my, in my facial hair. And that's where, that's where I realize a gap. Okay, so when you, go out, when you go to the shelf, you're looking at the products there, and everything is one size fits all. Right. right? So I didn't really know any product off the shelf that was actually fit for the type of facial, facial hair that I had at that point in time. And that's where I, I kind of had this aha moment. You know what? There must be so many people right now during the pandemic that are growing facial hair just like I, I am because right. they're not seeing a barber. They're getting lazy. They, they probably never had a beard in their life. Like take care of themselves, really, in, in a sense, right? Take care of themselves. And there's a lot of people in the pandemic that grew beards because, because they didn't have to see a barber and they just started to play around with the looks. Um, right. The numbers are crazy with how many people are new to growing beards right now. And... I was like, you know what? There's probably so many people out there that are curious about beard products and what they want to put in their beard. So I was like, you know what? Let me go on Instagram. And I looked up a hashtag, uh, beard gang, uh, beard oil, bearded man, I love beards. Just right. all these random hashtags. And I messaged a bunch of strangers. No. I just hit them up and I said, hey, um, I'm thinking about starting a beard company. This is my problem, you know? Um, I don't know what type of beard oil to buy because everything is one size fits all. Do you think it would be valuable if 
um, there was a beard company out there where you can customize your beard oil based on the type of beard you have. And we asked 100 people to complete the survey where we asked that question and a bunch of other questions. And we said, hey, if you fill this survey out, I'll give you a free bottle of beard oil. So that's basically how the, uh, the, the community building started. So you, I, wow, that is, it's almost like that is the structure of every business. Like you could not preach that perfectly um, to anybody because it's like, that is the, the ideal structure of how you would build a business. Identify the problem in your own life. Okay. Look for a solution, test the solution, test your market, test your audience, reward your audience, build that community by rewarding your audience. Like that's, that's literally what you did. Essentially, I knew that if I asked, so I started, I started looking into e-commerce and I started looking at brands that succeeded, Manscaped being one of them, yep. Fresh Heritage being another. And um, I started listening to a lot of podcasts. And what they said was, you know you have a business idea and you know that it will be a profitable business if you ask 20 strangers if this is a viable, if this is something they would buy. Interesting. So I asked a hundred people cause I wanted to be a hundred percent sure that, okay, 20 may not be good enough. Let's ask a hundred people. And literally every single person I asked was a bearded man. So my niche and all of them said, Hey, that would be freaking dope. Cause right now I'm just buying stuff off the shelf and I'm hoping it works for me. And I'm spending a lot of money trying different things out. But if I'm able to customize a product based on how long my beard is, the longer your beard is, you, you start facing different problems. Right. Right. It might get curly. You might get some beard rough or dandruff or um, your hair might not be as soft. Or, um, you know, if you have a girlfriend and you're like, you know, you're trying to get close to her, it might get in her face. And yeah. She might yeah. Not like how it feels, you know. So there's so many different problems that you can have depending on the size of your beard. And every single person I reached out to said, yeah, that would be a freaking dope idea. So, so you it. totally tested the market. Um, <clears throat> where did that knowledge come from for you to just do that? I mean, no offense, but a YouTube video is not going to teach you that. Like, n not many people can, like, just kind of know that. So it must have come from somewhere, right? That's a great question. Um, and one thing that I always encourage if you're starting something new is you should always have a mentor. So... Mm. Um, I mentioned this brand earlier, Fresh Heritage. Um, the owner, I know him very well because I reached out to him as a stranger. Said, hey, I love what you're doing. Can you tell me, um, you know, what it is that's going to make something work if I want to get into the same game as you? And he said, listen, whatever you're trying to do, ask a stranger and validate your idea. Huh. Right? And, and that right there, that kind of just solved your problem of is there even, you know, a, uh, a solution to this idea or – is it testable within the market? Absolutely. Right? So you knew that you had a problem with your beard, but you didn't know if the if anybody else did. You wanted to find out, okay, you know, is there another 100 people that are dealing with my problems, right? Even if you got like 60% of those people saying, yeah, the idea is worth pursuing. So I think, you know, to touch on this, a lot of people go in with ideas. They just have ideas, right? But they don't test the market. They don't understand, is there value in what I'm about to build? Is there value in the idea that I have? And that leads to a lot of failed businesses or failed business plans or unpursued plans, that kind of thing. You know, I, I call a lot of people. A lot of people ask to call me that are like really young because, you know, I'm 18, right? So I get a lot of like 15, 16, 17 year olds with these ideas of being an entrepreneur and, and you know, starting a business. And I love it. I do. So I'll call them. But then all I hear is ideas, 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 which is great. But the human brain comes up with over 3,000 ideas a day. For sure. So you can come up with a lot of ideas. Now, how are you going to make it attainable? How are you going to bring that to life? First, seeing if other people have the same idea because the way a business works is there's a buyer and there's a seller. You want to be the seller, but if there's no buyers and you don't even know if there's buyers, how are you going to build the business without buyers? You can't, right? So I love that you kind of tested it and then saw there is a need. So from there, seeing that there was a need, what were your next steps? Was it e-commerce right away? Did you want, I know some businesses, for example, our sponsor 416, they started, they actually wanted to get their coffee into stores. They realized that wasn't, that wasn't working. So then they did their own thing. They built their own stores. What was your kind of go-to market strategy starting the Build a Beard Co.? 
Well, um, the important thing there uh, was that I was not going to spend a dollar on this idea until I knew I was for sure about it. Interesting. Right? Interesting, yeah. So when I, when I hit those 100 people up and they said, yeah, I was like, you know what? This is a business plan worth pursuing. Now, how am I going to now leverage the 100 people that took that five minutes of their valuable time to help me? How am I going to reward them? I gave them free beard oil. What does that right. do for them? Nobody says no to free stuff. Let's face it, right? But if guess what? If you told what? me you're going to send me something free, I'd be like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Here's my address. <laughs> right. And then you're never going to forget that I sent you something for right? free. Yeah. I packaged that for you. I went to the mail, the, the post office. I sent it off. I wrote you a nice card saying, hey, thank you for supporting me and completing my survey. I really appreciate you. Here's some free beard oil. You're never going to forget that. And now we have this emotional connection towards each other. And it's almost right? like, you know, like, I'm going to be honest, if you send me something for free, my initial reaction would be, like, if I walked in and my parents saw me holding this thing, I'd be like, hey, mom, look at this. Some guy at, like, Build a Beard Co., like, sent me free beard oil for a survey that I filled out. And then, you know, I'm skeptical. Then I use it. And then I'm like, well, hold on a second. This is actually great. So continue, because I don't mean to cut you off. I just find that very interesting. A lot of people would tell other people about the idea, just you sending them for free, because it's so unusual. Nobody does that. Absolutely. And now we have this connection. So now imagine you have 100 people that you just built this connection with. Now they're your, they're your fans. They're going to be your first customer. Right. So, yes, I, I took the cost up front of sending that out, paying the shipping, paying the, 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 the cost of the product. But now I just, I just won myself 100 loyal fans that really – they're the true fans and they're the, they're the I guess, the forefathers of foundation. our – The foundation yeah. of our community – and guess what? Now I have a community. Now I've got 100 people that are going to post on their Instagram. Some of them might have 1,000. Some of them might have 10,000. Some of them might have 300. But they're posting me on, on what they're following. Right. Sharing. Sharing. Yep. Sharing, right? And then now, all of a sudden, you know, that 100 is going to 300. Then I got to 500 followers. And then the blog started picking it up, right? And then at that point, I was like, you know what? This is this – is, it's time for me to spend my dollar. Yeah. Now it's time for me to blow this up and really take this seriously. So what were you doing in between, like, we'll stay focused more on the business plan, but I'm really curious between your accounting job and like the first sale that you got of this thing, what were you doing? Really just community building. Community building. So, um, mainly it was networking. Um, literally going on Instagram and finding every single bearded dude I could find and just being like, Hey, follow my page. This is what we're doing. I need you to help me build my brand. So um, until we launched, we la so this account was opened on December the 17th of last year. I remember I just saw on your story, congratulations. Tomorrow will be the, that's the right. one year anniversary. Yep. That's, that's incredible, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. It's ironic that today's, or today, it's actually today. Today is the day today. that oh, uh, wow. we, we created the account. But until April, I was building the brand. So, um, the first thing that we did was we wanted to vote for a brand name. So we're like, okay, everybody who's following me, at, we were at like 300 followers at the time. Hey, guys, I need help naming my brand. Can you give me some name suggestions? And we got over like 50 names. And wow. Then, and then from there, um, the whole community voted on the top five. And they voted on the top three. And then they voted for the winning name. So our community actually named us Maintained. Um, and then... The following survey was, okay, guys, you know what? A dollar from every purchase is going to go support Youth Without Shelter in Toronto. And um, and you're from Toronto. That's a big thing for you. I'm from Toronto, and I'm um, sorry. I, I stand corrected. The community voted for the charity we wanted to support. So oh, gotcha. Youth, youth Without Shelter was one of them, and so that was the winning charity that, that, was, um, that came out through community voting. Wow, yeah, yeah. Uh, through our followers. Then we're like, okay, well – the survey that we completed. So we aggregated the results of the survey. And um, what came out of the survey was, you know, most people buy beard oil because they want to improve their beard appearance. Most people spend between uh, 15 to $25 on beard oil. Um, most people like a woodsy scent. They don't like, you know, citrus or um, unscented or interesting, type. Interesting. So and you so found to the knit detail every little thing that would be wanted in a, in a product. That's right. And I went to an oil consultant because I'm not going to start mixing this, this stuff up <laughs> myself, right? Accountant to oil oil mixture. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't want to be the guy in the kitchen doing yeah, it. So yeah. I, went to, I went to an expert and I said, hey, 
this is what I want. I want a woodsy scent. I want a, a, a mixture, an all-natural uh, blend of something that was is going to improve someone's beard appearance and make their beard feel softer. And I want something that that people can afford that I can sell for, you know, between $15 to $30. And right away, they whip something up. They gave me five different um, variations. And then from there, I had my first product, and that's what I actually gifted to the first 100 followers. So they didn't actually wow. know that they built the beard oil that they were surveying on. Essentially, they built that, that product for me. And you knew that, I guess, right off the bat, that that was going to be wanted because people told you that. Exactly. People told you that. Wow. And you rewarded people for doing that. So, you know, I, I, it goes back to, oh, well, some people don't even tell me what, you know, they want. They kind of just ignore me. Well, that's your fault because clearly you didn't look at enough people, right? Because there are going to be a hundred people in the world somewhere that are going to answer your survey. Right. So, you know, and, and more so if you're giving them something, Absolutely. right. So you got to find those people like to anybody listening, you know, it's, it's hard work and drive. Like you did not, you probably messaged more than a hundred people just to get a hundred answers. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like it, right. So, and you probably spent hours and hours and hours and hours answering those people and finding sure. the right people. Right. I know what it was like. Cause I started a little editing gaming business when I was in grade nine and 10 and I had to email or um, DM a bunch of different like Fortnite gaming clans and, and individuals and that kind of thing. And you would get maybe one of every 20 responses, like of people you message. So, you know, anybody listening, you just got to keep at it. Like you cannot stop messaging until you get what your mark is, what your goal is of, let's say a hundred people. So let's kind of transfer now. So you've got a hundred loyal followers. Now you're at like 300 followers on Instagram, that kind of thing from there to now today, what has that process been like in terms of building the brand, building the community, what are some strategies that you used to do that? And then we'll, we'll kind of dive more into it a little bit more after you answer. It's a great question. So um, a lot, it's a lot of trial and error, right? Like I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not somebody that's known social media. I just started playing around with it, right. you know? Um, the media really helped, so they picked it up at like 300 followers. Um, Blog TO just randomly gave us a follow, and um, they posted an article. They asked if, you know, if I wanted to answer some questions. And then that built up the following, that built built up the awareness. And there's a lot of curiosity about what was going to happen with the brand. Um, and then Six Buzz picked it up. And then Daily Hive picked it up. And then it went all the way to GQ. And so that kind of helped with the following right. um, and the, the community that we built. Um, but a because, lot of it. Sorry, because your idea was so unique. That's they right. wouldn't have picked up an, a, a random business, you know, like a, a fashion business, unless sure. they had this unique business model, you know, starting out. Was that your strategy? What, probably not, eh? Like to, to, I mean, have a unique business strategy enough to like get mar- like other brands on board. Did you, was that an initial thing you thought about? Absolutely. So oh, okay. that's, yep. that's one of the most important things when you're starting something, when you're starting a business, whether it's real estate, whether it's products, whether it's service, there's so many competitors out there. There's so many people doing an amazing job. There's a lot of good beard products out there. Right. And there's a lot of good realtors out there. There's a lot of good, um, I don't know, uh, doctors out there. But yep. why, do, why do you gravitate towards the person that you go to? You know, the reason why is because they're doing one thing that's different from everybody else. So it's not about when you enter a business, you always feel like, oh, you know what? When I do this, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to be that guy. But really, all you need to do is change one th- one thing about whatever it is that you're into, one little thing, and that's what people are going to gravitate towards. Right, right. So for me, in my case, it was the fact that our products are customized. You can, cu- you can put your name on the bottle, and you can customize your blend. The market has never seen that before. But I'm, st- I'm selling the same thing as everyone else, but I'm, I'm putting a personal touch to it. You, you know, it's a personal personalizable gift. Right. So the women are going to, you know, it's a for good boyfriend's gift. boyfriend's husband's, yep, yep. Right? You can put your boyfriend's <laughs> name on it. You can put your dad's name on it. So for me, it was like finding that one thing that um, would kind of differentiate myself from everybody mm-hmm. else. And that's that's where you kind of create your own own lane within a competitive market marketplace. Yeah, I got to be honest. Like, I would have never thought about an idea to kind of do that kind of community-based business brand because everybody is so focused on control. They want to control the brand. They want, 
but you just kind of had an open mind to it. Like you, you were very open minded to, you know, what people had to say about it. Realistically, just asking people what they wanted. But I think that contributes a lot to your success. Right. And so let's talk a little bit about today. What are some like, I guess, marketing networking strategies that you're using to get on articles, get on magazines, um, you know, hook up with big influencers. Cause I'm sure that's a big market for you is to want to get some like big influencers in the, you know, self care, uh, personal growth kind of beard, you know, industry of influencers and celebrities, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, what are some strategies that you're using right now to kind of build the community from, you know, 5,000 followers to 10,000? Uh, great question. I mean, you know, a lot of the strategies I've used is literally just outreach. There's no secret to it. Right. right? Like you just, you have to really, if you believe in yourself and what you're doing, others are going to attract to that, right? So what I find is when I'm when I'm hitting somebody up and I'm saying, hey, um, this is what I'm doing. Um, I'm building this brand and it's built by my community. Do you want to come support me? Um, there's a lot of value for you because there's a lot of learning. I'm being very transparent. I'm showing you how I'm building this brand. And you can probably learn a thing or two. And that's how I've gotten a lot of influencers to date. Like we've got NBA players, NHL players, um, social media, TikTok wow. stars. Yeah. Um, just because I hit them up exactly like that. And um, it, it really works because peop it doesn't matter how big that person is. They will respect the hustle because, because they can see how genuine it is. And then they can see a community that, that backs it up. Right, right. right. So... Um, a lot of people, when they start a business, or especially in e-commerce, which is the space that I'm in. Yeah, right? it's a, it's a, to jump in really quick before you continue. It's a, I, like I try, I tried starting an e-commerce business, and I think a lot of a lot of guys my age or kids my age kind of do that thing, and it's it's hard, like because there's so many of them, right? 100%. How do you build a unique niche? online, not drop shipping. I'll tell you that right now. It's not uh, Alibaba to, you yeah. know, Shopify yeah. to, to selling <laughs> anymore. That market's not there anymore. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Yeah. Mark seven years ago, but continue on. Cause I, I'm really curious to kind of hear what your thoughts are on that and, and the e-commerce, how you built that up too. No, I mean, it's, it's a, it's an important point that you just touched on a lot of people. When you think about e-commerce and in the, during the pandemic, um, there's been a surge of e-commerce stores popping up, right? Because everyone wants to create yep. that side hustle. Um, people who are working nine to fives were going into work every single day, right? And um, now because they're working from home, they're missing that one hour commute to work and that one hour commute back from home. That's two hours a day. Two hours a day times five days a week is 10 hours in a week. 10 hours a week is 40 hours in a month that you were spending driving to work every day that now you have... To, to build a profitable side hustle, right? right? And people are starting to look at e-commerce. The biggest mis misconception about e-commerce is you could just literally turn a store on, go on Alibaba, find your products, and just boom, start start tomorrow. And, yeah, and bring in, you know, $100,000 of sales a month. Yeah, like open up an Instagram account and you, we're in business. It doesn't, unfortunately, work like that, you know? And the way we structured our brand is we're supporting local only. So everything that we're buying, all the products, all the ingredients, uh, the packaging, the designers, um, anything that goes into building this brand is going to support a local business because we are a pandemic startup. There's a lot of businesses that were shutting down during the pandemic. And if I could do my part by supporting a business yeah. that will then support me, um, I'm making them happy. I'm making myself happy. Plus, my products are getting to my customers quicker because I'm not waiting on China to send yeah, me my product. Yep, yep. And, you know, they're on back order for four weeks sometimes. My customers are spending $100 and they're getting pissed off because their products aren't coming on time. Yeah. So supporting local for me was huge. And the biggest thing that I, I can depend on that separates me being an e-commerce success story is the fact that I can depend on community, right? There's people that are, that are rooting for my brand more so than me going out there saying, hey, buy my stuff. Like the community is telling people to buy it because they really believe in the transparent nature of how we came together to build something really special. So Vinny, can you kind of give us a rundown of how you analytically, I guess, analyze, I don't know if that's the right <laughs> words, but analyze your you know, revenue, your profit, your income through the e-commerce store? Because that's a big thing is to understand, you know, when you have your high months, when you have your low months, why did you have a good month? Why did you have a bad month? Like, what is that kind of thought process for you and, and your team or, or what that looks like for your community? 
That's a, that's a, that's a great question. And, um, being, being that I have an accounting background, um, you know, before I started, I did my numbers. I yeah. said, listen, if I'm, if I'm putting out a product that people want, um, how am I, it's not more so of me making like a crazy profit. It's that if people are asking for something, I want to be able to deliver, right. but I don't want to, I don't want to take losses, right? Because I want to be able to continue delivering on people's requests. So, um, a lot of number crunching for sure. Um, you're looking at your margins, you're looking at, um, not just a margin on the product, but like, um, how much money am I going to spend on marketing? How much money am I going to spend on packaging? There's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, miscellaneous costs yeah. that you don't even consider, <laughs> but it, but it does go into yep, like, yep. you know, it doesn't just cost, uh, me, you know, there, it doesn't, if someone's, if I'm selling it for $30, sometimes I'm not even making a profit. Yeah. I'm just breaking even. Right. So, um, I guess to answer your question, the, the high seasons, it, they really attributed to, um, or I could attribute them to, our, or the most successful months that I had was when influencers were really hitting with me. Interesting. Really riding with that's, me. that's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So there's this, there's this one guy, I'll shout him out. His name is uh, Michael McCorder. His name, uh, he goes by Tizzy, Tizzy ENT. If you want to follow him on, on TikTok, he's got over a million actually 3 million followers on TikTok, oh something, gosh. something ridiculous. Yeah. And he is a wonderful guy, really influential guy, super nice dude. Um, and he's got a massive beard and all he does is go on TikTok and he talks about politics and, and he really takes a stand for the people. Right. So there's a lot of BS going on that the media doesn't cover. So yep. he'll be like, you know, why is the media covering this? But this lady over here, you know, she's going viral because X, Y, Z. And guess what? I looked into it and, you know, this is why I think we need to go, go and so support her. So he's very – so I find that interesting. You jive with more community-based individuals Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. I connected with him right away Yeah. because I loved his content and I loved what he stood for. So I just hit him up. Hey, Michael, um, you have a really good beard. And what I noticed was I wasn't I wasn't trying to sell him anything, okay? This guy was he was becoming like his following was growing as I started following him, okay? And he started flying around during the pandemic and we sell these beard masks, okay? Right. So the best I saw those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So these beard masks are pretty I'm not even like even if I No, did give it us a little brand, sell. Yeah, these yeah. These beard masks are freaking awesome, dude, because um, the, a regular mask doesn't work for people with beards because it dents your beard in and it leaves it unprotected. Okay. So that's true. like I spend a lot of time grooming my beard and if I'm going out in public and I have to wear those blue masks, like, and then take it off and I'm in front I of see like, see what you're saying. Right? I, I see what you're saying. You're yeah. messing up your beard. You look, you look like a clown, right? If I'm going to the club, if I'm going out to eat with my girl, I don't want to take off this yeah, ugly yeah. looking mask. And now I have this little line and you know, I, I don't look presentable anymore. Right. So these masks, they cover your beard all the way down. They don't dent your beard in and they're very comfortable. So this guy's going on planes in the U.S., Michael. Right. And he's taking flights. He's going all over, um, you know, for, I guess, now business because he's becoming a somebody. And I just hit him up and say, hey, Michael, that mask that you're wearing is not good for your beard. And I know you're on camera a lot. And I know, you know, you're you're going to be on camera a lot. So I want to send you a free mask. I want to send you a set of free masks <laughs> just because I want to take care of your beard. Yeah. Right away. He sent me his address. He's like, thank you. I really appreciate that. And he really bought into the product. So he didn't really buy into my brand. He bought into my, my genuine effort to help him. Yeah. So that's the other thing about e-commerce. And I'm sorry that I'm going away from the question. No, but, no, go but for I, it. I, I got into um, really helping people. And then that's what kind of attracted those influencers to kind of ride with me. And then that's how I, I got those sales and those, you know what I, yeah. And, and I'm going to jump on that is like, I noticed you said that is when you got your peak months is when you had the most community. Right. Absolutely. And I guess that makes sense because you know, the higher the month in terms of revenue, the more buyers you had. Right. But it's when you connected with your community the most and reached out to your community on a mass scale. So, you know, you say, um, this gentleman has over 3 million followers, maybe not at the time that you helped them out, but he wore it on camera one time and people are like, oh, that's a sick beard. Even if a hundred people, like think about it this way. Even if a hundred people look at that video of the maybe 600,000 that saw of his typical following, sure. those guys with beards might say, damn, that's like a cool looking mask. Where did he get that from? And then, you know, the, the things right on the front on the mask and it's like build a beard coat. Oh, done. No problem. 
that kind of thing, right? Absolutely. So I, I find like that is a great way of analyzing your your income is saying, okay, that's when I that's why I sold so much. So what are you doing now to keep building those you know relationships with influencers and and that kind of thing? If that is the goal in your marketing plan or a big you know primary aspect of it, yeah, I mean. You know, I, I like to I like to approach it very organically, right? right? Um, because there are tons of influencers out there. It's a it's a growing segment, right, on social media. But you want to be able to to make a relationship with the person first, and that's where you know you you need to be able to when you're engaging with these people, you need to be able to have this mutual understanding that hey, if we're gonna do this together, I'm here to help you as much as you're here to help me. So this is not so I don't. The funny thing about what I'm running right now is I'm not even looking at profit profitability. Mm-hmm. I'm looking to, to help change lives, right? And it, it may be a little thing that I'm doing, right? Somebody, I'm trying to fix somebody's problem. That's a huge thing, right? And that's what- I, Yeah, I, I can't imagine. If I had a beard down to here and I'm wearing a mask and it's like I can feel it constantly pressing halfway through my, like it just wouldn't feel right. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and as long as I'm solving a problem for somebody- I, I think I have enough buy-in, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's kind of my motto when I'm engaging with influencers. The first thing I do is I say, hey, dude, um, I just saw this t- every single time. And 10 times out of 10, they're wearing that blue mask or yeah. they're wearing the black one that's like half their beard is coming out. The, f- the only thing I say to them is, hey, dude, we have a mask. I can help you with that problem. You're, you're, there's a lot of cameras on you. And I want to make sure that, you know, you look presentable. You're looking the best at all times. Yeah. Right. And I want to do my part. And doesn't matter what you're doing in life. If you're helping someone fix a problem, they're going to seriously take you into consideration. Yeah. Right. At at any cost. So once again, you're finding the problem in your community and helping them achieve it or helping them, helping them um, accomplish the solution. Right. And, and you're supplying them a product or, or a tip or something like that. So let's get into now content. I want to talk about content. So, so you said that, you know, come the new year, you're really going to focus on content because now you're entering, you've entered your second year, I guess in, in business. So congratulations. Um, so what kind of content, um, ideas do you have? What kind of things? I know there might be some under wraps, so I don't, I don't feel like you have to share all of them, but, um, what are you using social media for now in the, in the new year in terms of creating content? What are some niche things that you want to accomplish with your community? That kind of thing. Uh, great question. Um, and this is something that's always, um, you, you kind of learn about yourself. It's ever changing, right? Yeah. Like as, as I created this account, I kind of learned what I liked to do and what I didn't like to do. Right. So I found at times you were asking about peaks and valleys. I found at times that when I focused too much on product, it wasn't a good look for me because, interesting. because this whole time I created this brand helping others and um, community, community, community. And then anytime I was, um, you know, re- learning about, you know, how to sell products and getting people's input on what they think is going to work for me and trying those things out, they never worked. But anytime I was being genuine, it was really it working. Was working. And you know that everybody knows that, but to, to actually do it and then follow through with... And to keep yourself in check. Consistently keep yourself yes, in check. Yes, like you said, right? And to jump on that idea is, like you said, you know, the months where you focus more on product than, than you know, actually building a community are the months that you didn't really do well. Exactly. And so, you know, those are the months where you kind of lost yourself, but then you checked yourself up again and then you rebounded. It's hard to not get lost in, in a business than building a community because you have to pay your bills at some point, right? 100%. So that's kind of what I mean is there's a balance between building the community and then also you have to make a set amount of sales a month to Absolutely. actually survive, right? Kind of keep us keep us in the loop with that. Like kind of talk about now your content, how you keep yourself in check, keeping yourself in check with the community, that kind of thing. Yeah, so um, as I learned that I was going to, uh, or I found more success in keeping that genuine content, People were buying my product because they supported Vinny. They supported the guy mm-hmm. that's out there um, doing things for the community, and they want to give back, and then they want to try the product. So um, coming in the new year, I really want to focus on, um, I guess, more content, more videos, more uh, engaging type content where I'm out, I'm out there, or not just me, but the community is out yeah. there. And, um, for example, getting out on the streets, like we were talking about offline, 
um, getting out on the streets and finding people with beards and saying, hey, dude, um, I have this mask right here. I think yeah, you should try you it bring out. Like, you bring like 50 masks, just hold it in your bag. You walk around Toronto and say, hey, man, sorry to bug you, but uh, I really like your beard. I actually run a company. I want to give you a free beard, right now, a free beard mask right now. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. Right? Exactly. And I want to, I want to post that. And the biggest part of our brand is, um, is that it's a learning platform. So I started this thing because it was, um, a, a social experiment, right? So I had nothing to lose when I started it. So I have nothing to lose when I'm going out and doing content. And the reason why I want to get out there is because when people are watching me, when my followers are watching me uh, and the community's watching me, they're getting inspired and they're saying, hey, man, if this guy can go out and do something like yep. this, I I might have this idea that's been sitting on the shelf for probably five years. I need to start. I need to look into getting getting it. started on I that love as it. well. No. And you know what? One of the big things that you understand is you want to treat your community because your community has treated you. The more you treat your community, the more it'll repay you. But it's not like you do it for that. Right. You actually enjoy connecting with people. And I can see right now, I can see how much fun it'd be to, to create a video on the streets of Toronto, just handing out masks and then asking people, like actually finding out more about them, right? Quickly stopping them on the side. You give them something and say, hey man, how you doing today? Like, you know, you can kind of build that influential profile on TikTok or Instagram or what I love and admire so much about your business is it's not like your content strategy will be directed at business owners or entrepreneurs yeah. because let's face it, that is such a broad um, audience now, it's ridiculous. Yep. It would be the, the stay at home mom. It would be the, the dad who lost their job. It would be the 18 year old kid. It's so broad. It's like, really? Like it's, it's kind of hard to build an audience, but who's building, who, who has beards, right? Uh, guys who have beards are like guys who have guys who drive motorcycles. You're waving at each other, you know, when For you sure. pass them by on the street, right? Yeah. That kind of thing. And then, and then you drive with your community more because they, they feel your problems. You've got such a niche community, you know, taking advantage of that by going out and building that niche and actually just building such a strong, you know, bond. 1000 loyal followers is more important than a million. Eh, right. Eh. I like to call them eh followers, right. That are just going to watch your stuff. Absolutely. And not, you know, entertain your ideas and, and pursue, you know, their own ideas, right? I think it's really cool. So let's talk a little bit about now the future before we, we start to close it off here today. I want to ask you, like, five years is a long time. I mean, what you've done in a year is crazy. I don't want to ask what's going to be in five years because that's going to be too hard to even, you know, tell. You could be in L.A. selling these things, but you never know. Where do you see yourself, I guess, by the end of 2022, um, what are some goals that I can hold you to and that you can come back here and watch, you know, next December and, and kind of say, ah, I did that. Yeah, you know what? Um, I'm actually uh, on a mission to change the concept. The, sorry, I'm on a mission to change the, um, the image portrayed about men in the workplace. Hmm. So like we were talking about on, on offline was, you know, the stereotypical get up for a job interview is shave your face, put on a blue shirt and a tie, maybe a coat, um, and that's the, that's the stereotypical image of a, of, a, of a man going into work and trying to get a job. So, you know, it's 2022 now. We're just in the nick of 2022. Yeah. It's, it's time that that image changes a little bit, and I'm on a mission to, to make beards acceptable in the workplace. Right. And, and that's something that I'm going to get huge on. Um, and then the second mission I'm on is – to change the image around men and grooming, you know, usually guys have this egotistical view. They're using their girlfriend's, um, you know, body wash and, yep, yep. and, and grooming products. Well, guess what? It's time. It's time for men to actually take care of themselves and their health and be open about it and be open about it and, and make it cool. You know what? It's what I'm doing. I, f I find it cool. Like I have no, no shame in anything that I'm selling. You know what? It's, it's a, it's a market that uh, has been untapped for a long time. And like I said, as long as I keep addressing those problems and making people's lives better, I'm going to keep going hard. So yeah, that, you're, that's you're my staying ahead of the year. game by just asking people uh, what they want. And that's Absolutely. that's literally like why any business that's a billion dollar business is so big right now is because they identify the problems. They may not be, you know, creating questions, asking people what they want or surveys, but they're certainly studying the audience just like you may have a different way of doing it, but understanding the audience where it's at and where they're headed, right? Yep. 
So with that, um, you know, Vinny, what's one thing you want to say to somebody or I guess, okay, here, here's a good question. Um, a guy that has a beard right now, um, that is, it's not too tamed or anything like that, but he's a little bit shy to shy to really just embrace the beard. What's one thing, one, th- one thing you want to say to him? Hey dude, nice beard. Come check us out. We have, <laughs> we have the biggest, the dopest community on Instagram. Go check us out, follow us and get yourself a custom beard oil. You'll you got it, it man. Yeah. I love it. And uh, I want to ask, where can people, like, what's your domain that people can purchase from? Um, and then also your Instagram as well. Sure, yeah. Just go on to uh, www.maintain.com. That's M-A-N-E, like a lion's mane, dot tain.com. And uh, the Instagram handle is buildabeardco, C-O at the end. Love it. Love it, man. Thank you so much for coming on and, and traveling down from Toronto to come visit us in tiny town Niagara it's, Lake it's here. It's been an, an honor, and you guys are doing a great job. Thank and, you so and, much. And, and keep inspiring, man. You guys are really having some meaningful conversations. We, we appreciate it, it, brother. We, we love getting businesses on like this. So um, thank you so much, everybody, for, for watching, listening. If you're just on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, we do appreciate it. We've got some really cool episodes coming up in the new year. Um, I guess we should have worn Santa hats today, but uh, I'm, liking, I'm liking the maintained hat. So I don't know if I want to take that off you. But thanks so much, everybody, for listening. And we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Thank you for listening to this week's Golden Guest on the Meeting Gold Podcast. If you learned something from today's episode, make sure to check out our other content on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Instagram, and YouTube. Also, make sure to leave us a follow while you're there. Thanks, and have a golden day.